Welcome back, Hollywood Mechanic. We're gonna give you another list today. Top 10 tips to working on your supercar. I've beat my head against the wall a ton. Let's hopefully it can save you some headaches. <laughs> Tech tip number one, put your tools away. I, I know this is like, you've heard it, you've had other people tell you, it's annoying. Just shut up. I'm using these tools right now. I don't want to put them away. Keep getting them out. It doesn't matter. Put them away. You will waste so much time looking for, I don't know how many times I've seen techs just walk around looking down and looking on arms of lifts. If you want to do a job like a break and you know you're going to need those same tools right away again, it's worth investing in a small little table tray to roll around with you. Neatly lay out your tools. Uh, so that you can use them and put them right back on that same table. And then if you are doing a bigger job, if, you, if it takes you a minute to put the tool away, trust me, you're gonna spend five minutes looking for that tool if you put it on the ground. Tip number two, kinda goes along with tip number one, keep your areas clean. And that means if you're going in an engine and you're doing work, clean everything around you. I've worked on diesel cars a few times, and I hate working on diesels because they're just nasty black messes and it just takes forever. And it costs a lot of money in tools, gloves, and t towel wipes. But it's so worth it, you gotta do it. All right, so the next thing we're talking about, number three, is gonna be um, along those same lines of keeping things clean, and that's covering things. Uh, if you're working on exotics, uh, the interior is Alcantara, or it's white, or it's got red stitching on the dash and the steering wheel, or it's got stuff that you just don't want to get dirty. Uh, I've gotten things dirty, I've damaged things, and then it is expensive. And not only is it expensive, it's stressful. Get the plastic covers for the steering wheel, get the plastic or the paper mats for the floor, get the seat covers, get the plastic wrap um, that, like the plastic covers, what I use, it uses a non adhesive to adhere to wraps, paint. Uh, I have even used it on the interior of a car before. Sticks in place, you can double it up. Uh, you won't leave throw marks or tool marks. Um, so just do that. It'll save years off of your life, just the stress that you're avoiding. All right, tip number four. <laughs> Taking notes, man. I know this is like high school basics. Uh, nobody likes pen and paper, but I kind of actually like it now. And it's not just pen and paper, we've moved on to the digital age, so you need to have a little throwaway digital camera, one that you know you don't mind getting some oil on. But use it. Take notes, especially in if you're disassembling something, uh, the order that you've disassembled things. I don't know how many times you know parts come in a day later, I'm putting it back together, I put it, I do a lot of work and then realize, ugh, I gotta put that other thing on first because now I can't access the bolt. So the steps like on your notes will help a lot. The camera is gonna help a lot so you remember what wires go where, especially if you're deep pinning things. Also to show what was there before you worked on it. Take pictures of the car when it arrives. It'll help you show what damage was on the car before you touched it as well. It's like super awkward having to defend yourself when you are pretty sure you didn't do something. If you got the camera, you don't have to approve it. So tip number five, uh, you gotta slow down. Like stop and think. I don't care how many times you've done something on these cars, if you make a mistake, if you damage something, it's expensive. So listen to your gut. If something doesn't feel right, probably isn't right. I, I, I don't know how many times I've had this nagging feeling in the back of my mind and then I gotten done with a job and then had an issue with it later, you know? So just go slow, listen to your gut, and then also, before you go on to the next step, observe it in its entirety. All right, guys, tip number six. Yeah, it's got to do with torque, man. It's kind of important. It, 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 it's everywhere. And the thing is, is it's not as scary as you might think. I know you're like, what's the torque spec on this car for this piece? And you don't need to go into that much depth. Really, what you can do is download a torque sheet. Um, fast and all, several companies list these easily or easily found online i would go ahead and print one put it in your shop and it'll tell you based on the diameter of the threads like uh, m6 m8 m10 and the pitch 
uh, and the material that it's made out of or what it's going into, what the torque spec should be. And you're going to be pretty much spot on with that 99% uh, of the time. Uh, it's good to have manufacturer manual there. I always recommend using that, but if you don't have it, you don't have to sweat. You can go find these torque specs and then try it out. You know, get an electric torque wrench. I have a snap on one. It's dope. It's not that expensive. Uh, and then I try the torque and I try to put my hand at a position on the, on the wrench that's comparable to maybe one of my hand ratchets. That way I have the feel and then I can go through with my hand ratchet and quickly do the other bolts. If it's not, if it's a valve cover and you're not like trying to be uh, surgical with it. Uh, uh, always remember, don't break torque uh, with impacts and don't finalize your torque with impact. Tip number seven is cross threading. This is a big thing, especially uh, in these hard to reach areas. You should know what cross threading feels like. I know you've already done it before. Um, if you stop right away, you usually can save it without even tapping the threads. You just back it off, push it in, you'll develop a feel for when it's perpendicular to what you're going into and then start it again. And if you feel like you're constantly cross threading, stop and chase the threads with a tap. If you cross thread something and you can start feeling your two, three turns in and it's cross threaded, stop, back it out, notch a bolt and do this procedure and most of the time you can save it. But you know with that gut feeling when you just keep cranking, it's not gonna be a good day. You're gonna be like drilling out bolts, it's gonna suck. So learn not to cross thread. Tip number eight, don't leave a section incomplete. And this is a big one because especially if you're working at a shop, like the phone rings, people ask, you know, whatever, whatever. If you let yourself get distracted, you're not going to remember that one last bolt in the sequence that you didn't torque. And so these cars are hundreds of thousands of dollars, all right? More than a lot of people's homes. And you're going over 200 miles an hour, potentially, so people's lives are at risk. You cannot take a risk and leave something undone. So go ahead and get a, a paint marker. If it's important and you're reassembling it, go ahead and dot those bolts in a color that you will recognize that as yours. And that way, at a glance, you can come back and say, I've torqued all of these bolts down and I'm good to walk away from it. I've seen techs at high-end dealers not torque wheels and wheels come off. This is, nobody's above this. It, it can happen to any. Tip number nine, uh, be aware of your body, man. I'm not, this is not like saying you need to get in shape, whatever, you are who you are, whatever. But just know what you are and it's too much weight for an aluminum body panel or carbon fiber and it, it's you're laying all over these cars like anyone who's worked on Lamborghini you're literally you have to climb into the engine bay and not a flattering position but you got to be aware of where your body is if your elbow is in an aluminum panel you're going to leave a dent and then you got to pay somebody to get it out tip number 10 don't panic just breathe that's like one of my hardest obstacles to overcome. And that's my own mental state. I get to a point where I might not know exactly what to do in that moment. And I convince myself it's over. You know, I, you're not gonna be able to do this. Just quit, put it back together, tell the client, you, you can't do that. Take a deep breath, tell yourself you can do it and you can do it. There's not really any magic black box in a car that's that hard. Uh, I've done clutches, I've done transmission swaps, I've done supercharger installs, and it's there's been a point in all of those times where I was like, dude, I just don't know if I can do it. And most of the time, I get it resolved in that moment. And if I can't, I can find the information and I can find the expert that can help me do it. So don't panic. If you make a mistake, you damage a car, and it happens, don't panic. There's always a resolution. Do it the right way, don't hide it, don't pretend it didn't happen, but let it go, move on, and you can do this. All right guys, uh, that's been our top 10 tips for supercar techs. Um, you guys can do this. If you wanna be a supercar tech, don't let anyone tell you you can't do it. Just be smart about it, do your research, and uh, yeah, good luck.